you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, the Fighting Instruments of Karma Marching Chamber Band slash Orchestra. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Moggy, AKA Dmitry Karamazov. Ho. <clears throat> And I'm here to talk to you about the world's last touring Chautauqua, the new old time Chautauqua. What's a Chautauqua? Let's listen. Now, our sh traveling Chautauqua was founded in 1981 by the Flying Karamazov family and Patch Adams. We used as our template the historical Chautauquas who spread education and entertainment throughout the America from the 1870s to the 1930s. And our idea was to bring to this very American form our own certain new age fervor, delight, and reinvented vaudeville. So uh, in 1981, um, we started this up, and well, look at the result right here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, we didn't know at the time, we were a little bit clueless. We had on that first tour, for instance, a unicorn, which did not make it across the Canadian border. <laughs> but um, we traveled since then across, we started in Oregon, and we traveled since then across the greater Northwest, British Columbia, Alaska, post-Katrina, uh, the post-Katrina Gulf states with an incredible band of merry pranksters. And that's how we do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's an all-volunteer band. Nobody gets paid. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You guys, you guys are going to get paid. You guys are going to get paid. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> These guys are really testy, okay? <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like now to introduce to you one of the, some of the founding members of the new Old Time Chautauqua, the Flying Karamazov Brothers. <laughs> I'm Michelle Bates. I first joined Chautauqua as a photographer, then I learned to play the clarinet so I could join this awesome band, and now I'm also a member of our nonprofit board. The core of Chautauqua's programming is our summer tour, where we take 50 to 70 people on the road with us for about three weeks, stopping in several places for three days each. Our visit begins when our caravan of buses, U-Hauls, stuffed cars, and sometimes even boats arrives at our campsite. We set up our tents, mobile kitchen, and start cooking. Then community, local community members start arriving and we have a community potluck where we share music, stories, and laughter. This time together paves the way for our visit to become a shared effort between newfound friends. The second day of our visit, we try to serve the community by performing smaller free shows and helping out with local projects. On the third day is when we resemble the traveling Chautauquas of the past most. At noon, the day begins when the band, along with jugglers, stilters, and members of the community, parades down the main street of town, and sometimes even through the local supermarket. <laughs> My favorite part. We lead the crowds to our free workshops given both by Chautauquans and members of the community. And the evening is the big show, a full-length vaudeville extravaganza featuring aerialists, acrobats, magicians, singer-songwriters, and yes, jugglers. The next morning, we pack everything up, head off into the beautiful countryside to do it all over again. 
Our next performer may not know how to juggle, but he, Zach takes us from the sublime to the ridiculous and back again. Christian Swenson with Human Jazz. <laughs> Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where you want to be. And when you find yourself in the place just right, you will be in the garden of love and delight. <laughs> Well, what was that? <laughs> if you want to learn how to do that, come to a Chautauqua workshop. We usually set up our workshops in parks, and they're free and open to everyone. And you can learn circus skills, people participate in creative activities, and they share knowledge on such subjects as uh, health, sustainability, and social issues. We also do something else, which is what we call community shows, which have become a core component of our Chautauqua tours. We bring our band and our performers to soup kitchens, senior homes, boys and girls clubs, and reservations. We also go to institutionalized communities like convalescent homes, youth detention centers, and prisons. Now, uh, audiences, these audiences, when they are thrilled when they see suddenly in their daily normal life, a huge mini extravaganza explodes into their scene, right? <laughs> and for us, the interactions during and after the show are potent, visceral, and often intensely personal. And an inmate at the Eastern Oregon Correctional Facility put it this way, most of us are ordinary people who made a few bad choices. We really appreciate your large group looking beyond our past and coming in to share so much energy and uh, excitement with us. You gave us a taste of real personal freedom, which is so much more than just removing the bars and walls. So, our next act is someone who embodies that kind of personal freedom. Please welcome Sarah Sparrow. One, two, three, four. Another way that we connect with the communities we visit is by partnering with local groups, usually nonprofits. Our tour planners create relationships that benefit both us and the local groups. 
They help us organize and publicize our visits, and we contribute by sharing our profits from our paid shows, doing free small shows for their groups, and lending out part of our group to help out in large community projects. We've cleared trails, farmed, and in post-Katrina New Orleans, we cooked for relief groups and helped clear out flooded houses. These groups are the critical bridge that allow us to integrate in our visits. Many of, while many of our original Chautauquans still tour with us, the group now includes their children and even grandchildren and a whole new generation of Chautauquans. Each member takes on multiple roles in a tour. Performers drive the bus, musicians deal with the trash, and everybody washes the dishes. New Old Time Chautauqua is one of the only groups I know where parents and children from age 0 to 94 <laughs> <laughs> can still work and play together, have fun, tackle projects, and yes, juggle. <laughs> this next group includes two generations of Chautauquans. Maybe you can figure out which ones are related. The Mud Bay Jugglers and the Juggling Jollies. So why do we do it? Why all this mad volunteering for more than 30 years? Well, at first, it, we had this utopian ideal notion to heal the planet. And I used to say at the end of the show, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now go out there and save the world. But <clears throat> now, unless you're the Avengers or, <clears throat> or that nice Jewish boy from Nazareth or some other sort of superhero, <clears throat> <clears throat> turns out this is a really tall order to fill. So as we've aged as a group, we've kind of understood and learned that the way to engender substantive change is really very simple and very small. It's about community. Our community, the communities we encounter on our adventures, and really most importantly, it's about our interactions person to person, one on one, that leads to real change. And it's our love of music, play, laughter, and for each other that bridges all political and religious differences, whether on a baseball field, in a grocery store, or at a maximum security prison. So I've changed what I've seen now at the end wait, of the show, wait, which is- Wait, 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 wait. <gasps> Great, kids. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miles, and I've run away with the circus all my life. So this is easy. This is easy too. Also, music is pretty easy. So now, we'd like to play for you our national anthem, the Teddy Bears <laughs> Picnic! <laughs> Time for teddy bears. The little teddy bears are having a wonderful time today. What the teddy bears?
Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now go out there and change the world. Mm.